This is a uh, by Sebastian Bach. Before getting started with the design of an audio amplifier with electric microphone, I would like to say a huge thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. This is an example of a PCB that has been assembled, manufactured by them, and as you can see, it's really high quality. If you want to have your design ordered, please follow the link in the video description down below. Without further ado, let's do some electronics. Here is a nice little circuit that can take the output from a microphone, amplify it, and drive a speaker. The design is based on an example that you can find from the Analog Devices website from the video description down below. When working with this kind of circuits, you have to think that you are working with an audible range and we can only hear sounds whose frequencies are from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. This is the bandwidth that we are working with. Now reading from left to right, we have the microphone, which looks like a JFET, and we adjust the gain of this microphone through the resistor RD, which can be from 680 ohms to 2.2 kilo ohms. Okay? Now, when you think about an uh, audio signal, you think about a sine wave, it goes like positive and negative. But because we want to use a 5 volt rail, we don't have a negative voltages. So what you do is you use a capacitor to filter out the DC or a constant voltage and only let the signal through. You need to have a pass frequency that is below the 20 Hertz. So how do we do this? Well, we have this capacitor CM that is 4.7 microfarad and a 20 kilo ohm resistor going to ground RB2. And the cutoff frequency of this is 1.7 Hertz. Okay. But because we only have 5 volts and we cannot go negative, we need an amplifier whose reference voltage is at half that, so at 2.5 volts. So how do we do this? Well, we use a voltage divider that is comprised of resistors RB1 and RB2. RB1 and RB2 set the reference voltage for the non-inverting input of the non-inverting amplifier, which is based on the OP484. The OP484 is a really nice component. It's a precision, it's a rail to rail, 4 MHz unity gain stable quad operational amplifier. This is a mouthful, but what it means is that it's low noise. It can go from 0 to 5 volts when you have this voltage applied to it. It's fairly high bandwidth, meaning that we are not going to have problem amplifying our acoustic signal. Unity gain stable so we can use it as a buffer. And there are four amplifiers within the same package. It's a really nice component. The composite amplifier has been designed. It's brilliant because let's look at how it works. When you look at it, you see it's a non-inverting amplifier, but a non-inverting amplifier has the inverting input, the pin number three, connected through a resistor to ground. But here we have a resistor and a capacitor, so what does that mean? Well, if you look at it, you, we have the resistor RF, RC, and then the capacitor CC, which are in the feedback path. And that makes a filter. It's a low pass filter with a cutoff of 3 Hertz. So what does that mean? It means for signal frequencies that are lower than 3 Hertz, you have a voltage output that is 2.5 volts. So you have your base level. And if the signal frequency is above 3 Hz, which is what you expect from the audible range, as we discussed earlier, then you have a voltage output that is 11 times the voltage input. So you have gain. So it's not amplifying the base level, but it's only amplifying the signal. If you would have used a conventional non-inverting amplifier, you would be amplifying the base level and it would be saturating. So this is really, really smart. Then the resistor RE, what's doing is adjusting the standby or quiescent current so that the, the amplifier is not dissipating so much power. And to finish this review, then we have a capacitor that is connected to the emitter and then goes to the speaker. The function of this capacitor is double on the one hand 
it blocks the DC component and it only allows the signal to go through and then it's also a filter. We have again a high pass filter with a cutoff of 90 Hz. So it's partially blocking the audible range below 90 Hz from the 90 to 20 Hz. But you know, when you think about it, you still have a pretty huge dynamic range. Now let's take a look at how this works in practice. Let's put some components onto our breadboard and simulate a microphone and look at the emitter of the transistor and see what kind of signal we get, what kind of amplification we get. Okay, let's begin by testing the performance of the amplifier. So what I have here is the Adam 2000 providing power and we have, you can see there the yellow wire that is a waveform that is driving directly the non-inverting input of the amplifier and what we are doing is we are simulating a microphone. There is the meter follower amplifier and the yellow wire is the oscilloscope so we are measuring the amplified output and that would be connected later to the uh, speaker. And other than that, as I said, the uh, Aram 2000 is providing power, so it's providing to this rail uh, plus 5 volts and ground. And something I have struggled with is I didn't know that these breadboards had the power rails split, so here it is a completely power rail, uh, a completely different power rail to the right, and you have to be careful with that. Now let's go take a look at some waveform. I have enabled the uh, one of the voltage outputs from a power supply, supplying five volts, and uh, the signal that is simulating the microphone is 50 millivolts, peak to peak, with a frequency of 200 hertz, and an, and an offset of 2.5 volts. And that's what we can see at the emitter of the emitter follower amplifier. The orange signal is the input and the purple is the amplified output. And as we can see, we have a gain of approximately 10. And now let's see what happens. Uh, this is on top of a 2.5 volt rail or a DC offset. And what this means is that because the amplifier can only go from 0 to 5 volts, the maximum voltage peak to peak will be 2.5 volts. Now let's change the voltage amplitude and see when it saturates. At 100 millivolts, we can change here the scale it's still amplifying nicely 200 millivolts still no problem and we expect that it will clip at around 250 let's see what does it look like now look it is starting to clip and this is only going to get worse and worse 300 millivolts Yes. Okay. The circuit works well, so let's now put the microphone and the speaker. Now is the moment of truth. Let's see how well this works. I have here my um, wireless headphone and uh, let's play some music. Let's see if we can get it out of the speaker. This is Air uh, by Sebastian Bach. Thank you for watching this video and make sure to subscribe for more fun electronics tutorials. Until next time.